it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Are you ready? Let's go! Chapter 6, lesson number 8, the sum of a geometric sequence. Before we jump into that very quick recap, what is the difference between a sequence and a series? Danielle! Perfect. A sequence is a list of numbers in a definite order. A series is the sum of those terms. So in the last lesson we were looking at a geometric sequence, and a geometric sequence is one where the numbers, to get the next term, you multiply by the same number each time. So example here, this is a geometric sequence because we're multiplying by 2 every time. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. We're multiplying by the same number. Whenever you get that to find out the sum of those terms, there are two formulas that can be used. It does not matter which one you use, but for arithmetic simplicity, to make the number slightly easier, you're best to look at the value of r, and if r is bigger than 1, you're best to use this formula. So the sum of n terms equals, and you've got a bracket, r to the power of n take away 1, close bracket, all over r take away 1. So if r is bigger than 1, use that formula, and if r is less than 1, use this formula, which is very, very similar, but instead you would have 1 take away r to the power of n. And instead of r take away 1, you'd have 1 take away r. Both of these are given on the formula sheet. Let's look at some examples then using these. So example 1, find the sum of the first 9 terms of a geometric series. 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 and so on. Hannah, what would you do first for any of these? Perfect. Just start off writing down what you know is the way I do it. Just makes it slightly easier. So if you know the first term, write it down. If you know the common ratio, write it down. If you know how many terms you have, write that down. So here, A mark is going to be brilliant. A is 4. A is just your first term. Your common ratio, what is that? R equals brilliant. It's just going to be 2. You can see you're multiplying by 2 every time. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. If you're unsure about what the common ratio is, just take the second term and divide it by the first, or the third divided by the second, and so on. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, so you know you've just multiplied by 2. And n equals, what's n going to be, Gen Z? Good, that's going to be 9, because we want the sum of the first 9 terms. Because r... In this example is bigger than 1, so because r is bigger than 1, you are best to use the formula just at the top. You can use the one at the bottom if you want, works out just as well, but you end up having to deal with negatives. To avoid the negatives, use this formula at the top. So you've got the sum of the first n terms equals a bracket, r to the power of n take away 1, close bracket, over r take away 1. Replace a with 4, replace n with 9, and replace r with 2, and that will give you 4 times 2 to the power of 9 take away 1 over 2 take away 1. Put that into your calculator beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, and you end up getting 2044, meaning the sum of the first 9 terms of that geometric series will be 2044. Yeah! Example 2, evaluate the sum of 0 0.9 to the power of k going from k equals 1 all the way up to 20, giving your answer correct to three decimal places. Once again, you are using sigma. Do not freak out. You just have to think about what that means. Smilty, help us out. Brilliant. What you would do is you would have 0 0.9 to the power of, and because it says here k equals 1, that's what you would start with. So you know really this means you'd have 0 0.9 to the power of 1. And then sigma means the sum of, so what you're adding on? Well, you're adding on the next value of k when you sub that in. So the next value of k would be 2. So you would have 0 0.9 to the power of 2. Then you would sub in the next value of k in here, so you'd have 0 0.9 to the power of 3. And you would keep going, so you've got 0 0.9 to the power of 4, to the power of 5, to the power of 6, and so on. Piper, where would you stop? 20! Perfect! So you would keep going until you subbed in 20. This number at the top is where you finish, so you'd have 0 0.9 to the power of 20. So that there really is our series. You've got 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 squared plus 0 0.9 cubed, and so on. What we want to do is we want to find the sum. Remember, sigma is the sum. We're wanting the sum of that series. So to do that, we are having to think about one of these formulas. 
in the formula, you've got A, you've got R, you've got N. So again, just write down what you know. So here, the, val the value of A is, well, we're starting off with 0 0.9. That's the first term, so A is just 0 0.9. The value of R, what's the value of R? What are we multiplying by each time, Megan? Good, you're multiplying by 0 0.9. You had 0 0.9 to start with, then you had 0 0.9 squared. Well, that was taking 0 0.9, the first term, and multiplying it by another 0 0.9. So you had 0 0.9 times 0 0.9, so you were squaring it. If you're unsure about that, remember, just take the second term and divide it by the first. So if you do 0 0.9 squared divided by 0 0.9, you just get 0 0.9. And n, what's n going to be? How many terms do you have? Well, you know that's the first term, that's the second, that's the third, which means then that this will be the 20th term. And you can see that there, you're going from one up to 20, so there will be 20 terms. Because r is less than one, you're best to use this formula just at the bottom. It will avoid the negatives. So replace a with 0 0.9, replace r with 0 0.9, and replace n with 20. If you do that, you will have 0 0.9, bracket 1, take away 0 0.9 to the power of 20, close bracket, over 1, take away 0 0.9. You can simplify that slightly. The bottom just becomes 0 0.1. If you put all of that into the calculator then, you will end up getting two three decimal places, 7.906. And that is your answer. Woo! Well done. Example 3, evaluate the sum of the geometric series 4 plus 20 plus 100 all the way up to 62,500. So again, we're wanting the sum of a series. So before we can choose which formula we are going to use, we need to think what is the value of A, what is R, what is N. So start off writing down what you know. So the value of A in this case A is your starting value, the first term, and that is 4. The value of R, what's R going to be, Marta? Brilliant, that's just going to be 5. Good. The ratio is 5, you can see that you're multiplying by 5 every time. 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 5 is 100. If you're unsure, do the second term divided by the first. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And N, what is N going to be? Yeah, I don't know either. So, in order to use the formula, we need to know the value of n. So what we're going to have to do, first of all, is to determine how many terms are in this series. How can we go about doing that? Does anybody know? Ryan. Perfect, Ryan. Well done. We know that the last term, let's call it un, must be equal to this 62,500. So we're going to say un equals 62,500. And what we can do is we can use our general term for a geometric sequence un equals a r to the n take 1 that we looked at in the last lesson in order to work out the value of n. So, to do that, we know that un, well, we know we're looking at this last term, that is 62,500, so we can say that is equal to, well, we know a is 4, we know r is 5, and we know n take away 1, we just have to leave as n take away 1. We are wanting to find the value of n. n will tell us how many terms are in the series. So, first of all, to get that, divide both sides by 4. Doing that then, you will be left with 5 to the power of n take away 1, and that will equal 15,625. How can you go about finding the value of n after that? What can you do, Oliver? Brilliant! To get the value of n, you have to bring n down from an index just down to the bottom here. And to do that, you would use logs. What I'm going to do, really in advance, I just have to deal with natural logs. So, take the natural logs of both sides, you'd have ln 5 to the power of n take away 1 equals, and take the natural log of this side as well, ln 15,625. The whole point in doing that, Oliver, why do you suggest that? Perfect, because one of your log rules is you can bring this index down, so that will become n take away 1 times ln 5, and that still equals your right hand side. To get the value of n, you can divide both sides by ln 5. Let's go over the page and do that. So that will give us n take away 1 equals ln 15,625 divided by ln 5. Work that out, and that gives you 6. 
So you know what n take away 1 is 6, meaning that n is going to be 7. Which means then that there are 7 terms in that series. So we already knew the value of a, we know the value of r, and now we know that there are 7 terms, so we know n is equal to 7. To work out the sum of that series, well, we are going to use one of these formulas. Look at the value of r. Because r is equal to 5, well, you know it's bigger than 1, so use this formula here. So using that, we'd have the sum of those first n terms equals a bracket r to the power of n take away 1 over r take away 1, which means the sum of the first 7 terms will be a is going to be 4, so it's 4 times r is going to be 5, so it's 5 to the power of n, which is 7, take away 1, over r take away 1, which is 5, and take away 1. Work that out then, that just gives you, leave the top line as it is, 5 take away 1 is 4, so we're left with that. We could divide both the top and the bottom by 4, so we're left with 5 to the power of 7, take away 1. Really though, just use a calculator from here, and that gives you 78,124. Woo! And that's your answer. Example 4, find the least number of terms of the geometric series 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus 108 plus and so on which must be added to give a sum exceeding more than 1 million. 1 million. Woo! So to do this we know then that a is going to be 4. We're just writing down what we know. The common ratio, what is the common ratio? DJ. Perfect, the common ratio is 3. You know to go from 4 to 12, you multiply by 3. To go to 12 to 36, you multiply by 3. It works every time. If you're unsure, just divide the second term by the first. R is equal to 3. And N, what is N going to be? You're perfectly right. We do not know what N is. If we did know what N would be, well, that would just be our answer. We're wanting to find the number of terms, which I'll add to give us some exceeding 1 million. So N is what we're wanting. In order to do this, we know that R is equal to 3, meaning then that R is bigger than 1. So our formula is going to be this one here. The sum of N terms equals A bracket R to the power of N take away 1 over R take away 1. Let's sub in those values of both A and R. So that will give us 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of n take away 1 over r take away 1, which is 3 take away 1, which simplifies 2. Well, the bottom will just simplify to 2. And then you can divide the top and the bottom by 2, meaning then you'd have 2 times 3 to the power of n take away 1. That is going to be the sum of the first n terms, but we are wanting to find it, so the sum of n terms is going to exceed 1 million. So start off just by setting that sum equal to 1 million. Don't just say it's bigger than 1 million, set it equal. And if you set it equal, you can then find this value of n. So going over the page to do that, we can say that, or let's say the sum was 1 million, so 2 times 3 to the power of n take away 1 equals 1 million. Divide both sides by 2, that will give us 3 to the power of n take away 1 equals half a million, or 500,000, meaning then 3 to the power of n would equal 500,001. Once again, we are wanting to find the value of that index. Basit, what would you end up doing? How would you do that? Perfect. Once again, if you want to find the value of the index, take logs of both sides. In advanced higher, you just really have to deal with natural logs. So take the natural logs of both sides. So ln3 to the power of n equals ln500,001. What's the whole point in doing that, Basit? Perfect. Once again, it lets you bring this index down. And if you bring that down, you will end up with n times ln3 equals ln500,001. To get n on its own, you would divide both sides by ln3, and if you put that into the calculator, you end up getting 11.94, and so on. Meaning it's the 11.94th term that'll give you 1 million, which doesn't make sense. n is just going to be a whole number. You're going to have one term, and two terms, and three terms, and four terms, and so on. You're not going to get the 11.94th term, which means then that the sum is going to reach 1 million between the 11th and the 12th. But if you round down the way to the 11th, well, it won't quite have reached 1 million. So you'd have to round up, which means it will be the 12th term 
that will give you a sum that exceeds 1 million when you add all the terms together. So this means that 12 terms must be added to give a sum that exceeds 1 million. And that's your answer. Yay! Example 5. A line is 315 centimetres in length and is divided into six parts, such that the length of the parts form a geometric sequence. Woo! Given that the length of the longest part is 32 times the length of the shortest part, find the length of this shortest part. So for this question here, the way you can start that is you can say, right, well, we're going to have a geometric sequence, so we're going to have u1, u2, u3, and so on. So let's say that u1 equals this shortest part. u2 then, the term after that, let's say that's the second shortest part, all the way up to u6, which will be the longest part. So in other words, our geometric sequence is going to be u1, then u2, then u3, u4, u5, all the way up to u6. What else are we told? Well, we're told that the length of the longest part is 32 times the length of this shortest part. So because of that, we know then that u6, this longest part, is going to be equal to 32 times the shortest part. So u6 equals 32 times u1. Where can we go from there? Well, we're going to have to start working out the different values of R and the values of A. The value of A really is what we want to find. So to do that, we can use UN equals AR to the N take away 1. We know from this, if we're thinking about this at first term, U1, U1 is going to be AR to the power of n take away 1. But if you have u1, it's going to be 1 take away 1, so you'd have ar to the power of 0. And we know then that anything to the power of 0 is just going to be 1, so we'd have a times 1, which is just a. We also know that u6 would equal, well, u6 would be ar to the power of 6 take away 1. So that would be ar to the power of 5. Because we know that u6 equals 32 times u1, we can say then that ar to the power of 5 is u6, but that's equal to 32 times u1, and u1 is just a, so it's going to be 32 times a. Because you've got an a on this side and an a on this side, you can divide both sides by a. So dividing both sides by a, it leaves you with r to the power of 5 equals 32. And if r to the power of 5 equals 32, then you know you can take the fifth root of 32, which is just 2. So we know r is equal to 2. Where do we go from there? Well, think about what else we know. We know that this line is 315 centimetres in length, and it's been divided into the six parts. So if you add those six parts together, you will get the 315. So u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus u4 plus u5 plus u6 must equal 315. So we know the sum of those six parts equals 315. Because we know this common ratio is going to be bigger than 1, we are going to use this formula just at the top. Sum of n terms equals a bracket r to the power of n take away 1 over r take away 1. Subbing in the value of r and subbing in the value of n, remember r was equal to, just in the last page r was equal to 2, and n is going to be 6. So we can say then that a, we don't know what a is, we're just leaving it as it is, a times 2 to the power of 6, take away 1, over r, remember it was 2, so it's 2 take away 1, that must equal 315, because we know the sum, we know what you get when you add them together. 2 take away 1 is 1, so that is what you end up getting. You don't really need to write that. You can ignore that 1. And if you work out 2 to the power of 6 take away 1, well, that is 64 take away 1, which is 63. So it's 63 times A. 63A, then, is 315. And if you divide both sides by 63, you end up getting 5. So a is equal to 5, and remember, a is that first term. In this question here, though, when it's talking about the lengths of the line, then you know the length of the shortest one must be equal to 5. So the length of the shortest part of this line is 5 centimetres. Woo! Try some of these questions in the Unit 2 booklet. You're on page 27 and on page 28. Check your answers as you go. Best of luck working out the sum of a geometric sequence. Have fun. Bye. See ya.